Welcome back. Chef, restaurateur, and James Beard Award winner Mike Lotta believes in simple, unpretentious, locally sourced food served in a comfortable setting. And that philosophy just happens to extend to the design of his home. And that's where I meet up with him. Take a look. Ooh, cheers. Hey, Mike. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How good are you? Good to see you. You too. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I love the shells in this stuff. Isn't that cool? It's called tabby. It's pretty common around here in Charleston. They mix the oyster shells with the cement. Very cool. I've never seen that before. And this property, I mean, is amazing and huge. I know. I love it. It's two acres. It's five minutes from downtown. And it just feels like it's an oasis, really. I feel like I've gotten yeah. away from it all when I'm here. Well, I can't wait to see the inside. Come on in. So, you know, when we bought the house, it was kind of dated and it needed updating, but over the years, you can imagine several people have done renovations to the house. So where are we right now? So this is the dining room. We want it to feel like an old farmhouse, but slightly with the contemporary kind of feel. So as a chef, I know that the kitchen is very important for you. So let's see the kitchen. Okay, so here's the kitchen. Well, I love what you did with it. I don't know where you started, but it looks good now. The layout was terrible. It was just um, one bad idea after another. So what makes a well-designed kitchen, do you think? Well, I think it's got to be personal, right? And how are yeah. you going to use it? I think the right equipment makes yeah. a big deal. I don't want to do anything that's not functional. Yeah. I want to make sure I have one oven, one range. I want to have space. I want to have two sinks. You know, I didn't even notice until like just now that these are all open shelves. With the sink option in the island, it really eats up a lot of the space. I love the look of marble counters, but I personally didn't do it because I was afraid I was going to ruin them. You went with it. I know, and everybody <laughs> told me the same thing. It's gonna be very high maintenance. And there will be a time when it starts etching and all you can see are those rings from the cops. But over time, it'll all work together. So this is our living room. This is where we spend all of our time. But the original living room is something quite different now. Ooh, you I can't see wait it? to see it, yeah. You know, so there was no closets in the house. I love a good closet. This is a good closet. So the idea was to take the center island here, and one side is the vanity, and the other side is the sink. Tub is awesome, we have a steam shower. I actually love the open feel of this, and you did such an amazing job with a blank slate. Obviously you had a lot of vision for this, and it came out so nice. Thank you. It makes me want to steal some of these ideas. You should. <laughs> Well, I did notice when we were passing through the kitchen that there was food on the stove. I'm gonna make lunch for you. Oh my God, nobody ever cooks Are you for hungry? me. I'm always hungry. Okay. Oh my gosh, it smells good in here already. So we're gonna make some sort of a southern... Seafood gumbo. Yes, so tell me about your gumbo. Gumbo is one of those dishes that's always intrigued me because everybody has a different opinion about it. Yeah. And this dish here is a good combination of like taking what we have locally, the best shellfish, and then you know being inspired by a New Orleans dish because I just have a passion for it. So let's just get started, right? Let's get started, yeah. Okay, so Put me to work. number one, the roux, right? That's a very important part. Yeah. So if you're ready to work, we'll start you with the roux. So we have flour, and we start with canola oil because it has a high smoking point, Yeah. right? So we can just kind of let it rip. The next most important thing in a gumbo, I think, is the stock. So what we have here is, you know, uh, the heads from the shrimp and the bodies from the crab. They get roasted, and we make this really nice stock out of all the shellfish. When you were designing this kitchen, did you stand in it and think, okay, if I do this, am I gonna, like, did you mock up anything? We looked at a lot of, you know, like concepts on paper. It became obvious to everybody involved that this was the best layout. And it hit, it checked all the boxes. Part of the building, the, f the flavor building process, I add the onions, and I kind of want those onions to really kind of simmer and caramelize a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we'll toast that up in there, or at least we'll activate the spices in there. It's gonna have a lot of flavor. It should, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna add wow. a little stock, right? For some reason it feels like the gumbo comes from love. I know, but you've gotta stand on top of this thing. It takes some commitment. So instead of sausage, I wanted to uh -huh. add pork belly. Pork belly makes everything better. Okay, so let's, let's add the seafood now. Okay. So we're gonna do shrimp, oysters, and crab. That is seafood gumbo. It sure is. At least mm. my version of it. Let's eat. Let's eat. That's all we have left to do. I love it. 
Wow, that looks delicious. Okay. okay, I'm digging in. You ready? Go for it. Yeah. Wow, that is so good. There's so much flavor in that without it being spicy. I know, and for me, it's like the perfect meal, especially with this weather. This is the best gumbo I've ever had. Really? Yes, absolutely, hands well, thank down. Thank you so much. Now, thank you so much for having me and making me some gumbo and showing me around the house. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to click and subscribe. We've got so many more beautiful homes to share.